What is up YouTube? The PVD Glove Bros are back. Yes, I am Philip, and I represent one half of the PVD Glove Bros. My brother Vincent is behind the camera filming this awesome video that we're coming at you with. The Nike Shadow Elite J break-in video as voted on by you guys, the amazing Instagram and YouTube community. So without further ado, let's get right into it and see how this thing looks. So here it is right here. We got the Shadow Elite J. Look at this, this is it an official box? And there we go, we have our glove wrapped in the plastic very nicely. This, wow. And so what do you think of that, that glove, man? That looks pretty sick, don't you think? I know, as you can guys can see right here, let's get a closer look at that. It's gonna feature that diamond web, which is very prevalent on Ian Kinsler, former Rangers. Hey, he was a Padre too, and an Angel, a second baseman. I'm wearing the Texas Rangers hat from the 2011 World Series. Obviously, Kinsler played in that, they didn't win it but still a very cool uh, moment for Ian Kinsler and for the Texas Rangers. And every time I see a glove modeled like this, I immediately think of him, especially with that What Pros Wear shout out that they gave him uh, a few years back. This glove is gonna feature, they advertise it as being like a golden tan, which I would say it definitely is a golden tan. Maybe a little bit of yellow, would you say, Vincent? That, that definitely has a little bit more of like that yeah. Japanese yellow that you see on a lot of... Yeah, like the Robert Robert Suarez, the Padres pitcher. He's it's not a Nike that he uses. He uses a Mizuno, but it definitely has that kind of yellowish look to it. I really like it. The glove, honestly, on my hand feels very soft. I like it. I think it's going to break in nice. It is stiff as a brick, as you guys can see right there. The iconic Nike Shadow Elite J. Those Japanese characters. This is going to be a nice glove to break in. Here's all the stuff we are going to be using to break this glove in. Right here, we'll start off with a mallet. If you don't have a mallet, you can always use a screwdriver, screw uh, the screwdriver onto like an old baseball and you can hit it like that. I personally just prefer the mallet. It's easier, it's a little bit more sturdy. I personally recommend the Rawlings mallet because if you can see it, Vincent, you can kind of zoom in on that. It kind of has this little glossy finish right here. And this I found is very helpful, especially when you're breaking in gloves that are not only have dark interiors, but also have very light interiors like this glove uh, because when you're breaking in gloves with that Mizuno mallet, sometimes that doesn't have this glossy finish, the black or the brown coloring can sometimes die onto it. And then when you go to break in a, a lighter colored glove, that can bleed into the glove. So I like it when it has the glossier finish, it's easy to clean off with like an alcohol wipe. And then you can just go straight into breaking in a glove that has a light interior without ruining the glove or you know creating that staining that you might not want right away. Next, we got a Rawlings glove wrap. This one has definitely seen some use, but these are very nice. If you don't have one of these, you can easily go get a belt. This just is to wrap up the softball and the baseball when we are done malleting the glove, just to let it sit overnight and develop that pocket. Next, a batting glove. This one's a batting glove for my right hand. And the only reason I use a batting glove, you don't have to use a batting glove, but the only reason I do is because when I'm malleting that and I'm religiously malleting this glove, sometimes you can get those blisters on your right hand which isn't a big deal, but this is just definitely helps out uh, as far as making sure you can break it in and you know continue malleting the glove for longer periods of time. So I personally like a batting glove when I'm breaking those in. Right here, a softball. That's just gonna help us develop that deep pocket and really stretch out that leather. And then finally a baseball because that's what we're gonna be playing catch with. So we wanna make sure that this glove can catch and hold a baseball. Those are, that's it. It's all you really need to break in a glove. I'm not really a huge fan of the hot water method or anything that involves steaming the glove just because I feel like it kind of deteriorates the integrity of the leather and especially the laces I've noticed. I have steamed gloves in the past long ago and I found that the laces and the leather kind of broke down quicker. So I would prefer just right here, just nice and easy, malleting, playing catch. I'm gonna break it in traditional, so I'm gonna go one out. I'm gonna look to break this in with a little bit of a deeper pocket, so I'm gonna shoot to go thumb to pinky finger, maybe thumb to fourth finger. That's the ultimate goal with this. I like to have the glove that has a deeper pocket. It, for me, it just helps with capturing those hard hit line drives hit at you. And especially nowadays, sometimes the playing surface isn't that great. So having that deep pocket where you can, it kind of helps you in a way where you might get that bad hop. It'll, the ball just kind of finds the pocket. That's what we want. That's what I really like when I'm playing the infield. So let's get right into it. I can tell right away this glove wants to squeeze naturally with a deep pocket. So I'm gonna start Mallet in the glove. I'm just gonna mallet the pocket a few times. So just gonna hit hit around the pocket. The pocket you want it to be around right there where the web and the laces meet the actual palm. Right there. And I'm just gonna hit that a few times and just kind of break this thing and start loosening the leather. That's ultimately what we want to do here. 
All right, so now that I malleted the pocket, I have a really good idea of how this glove is gonna close, and I also have a really good idea of how loose this leather and this palm is gonna be. So now, with that, I can start and begin stretching out those laces. We've seen this and we've seen also do this a few times in his Wilson glove videos, but it definitely helps a lot. You're just gonna wanna stretch each one of these laces. You know, just pull them apart, nice and easy. Just kinda helps loosen up the fingers a little bit and helps get that web loose. Gets a little bit of space so that when you start playing catch with it, the ball is naturally just gonna go straight to that pocket. And then right after that, once we've stretched out those fingers and we've malleted the pocket, now you can start, and what I like to do is then I'll start malleting around the fingers and I'll start malleting just all around the glove at that point, just to kind of loosen it up. I'm not really working on the breaking point yet, that we're gonna do next, but I just wanna loosen up the leather. I just wanna get an idea of how this glove is feeling, how the glove wants to break in, because from there, to me, that's the best point of how you'll know where you want your breaking points to be, just kind of by loosening up the leather. Okay, so now that we've loosened up the leather a little bit, now is when I like to start establishing those breaking points. Personally for me and how I've always broken in gloves is I like to personally loosen the leather up because by loosening the leather up before we establish those breaking points, you can kind of get a better idea of how the glove wants to close because each glove is a little different. Glove models are designed to close a certain way, but honestly, each glove is so different and some gloves close a little deeper than others. Some glo gloves are a little more shallow. So I think that by loosening the leather, before establishing that breaking point, you can kind of get a better idea of how your glove wants to close and how you're gonna be able to use it in the game. I want one of the breaking points because after loosening the glove, I can tell that one of the breaking points is right here where the thumb is gonna meet the heel. And the other one is gonna be right here where the pinky meets the heel, right here along these two laces, which kind of represent baseball seams. So I want that glove to have that. I wanna emphasize and overemphasize closing the glove this way, right here, thumb to pinky because ultimately if you overemphasize it there, you're gonna get it exactly where you want it or where I want it, which is thumb to fourth finger to give me that deep pocket. So I'll start on the thumb right here. So I can, right here, we're just gonna kind of bend it into place and just hit it. Right here, I like to use this knot as kind of the target because it gives you a consistent place to hit it each and every time. Now I'm gonna move on to that pinky side right here because that thumb, that thumb is looking good. I like how it's, how it's turning out. Now the pinky right here. And I said right, right along there is kind of where I want that breaking point to be. So I'm just kind of bend that pinky in a little bit. Not all the way, just a little bit. I'm not gonna hit all along the pinky. I'm just gonna hit it down here. And then in between each one, I wanna also hit it on that heel pad too to kind of loosen up the heel pad. You can also do a little bit of this. This also helps loosen up the heel pad, which I did that a little earlier. Then I just wanna hit that heel right here, just like I said. Now I'm loosening up the heel. Kinda of go back to that breaking point on the thumb, right back to the heel, over to the pinky. You can kinda of alternate. Like I like to go 10, 10, and 10. Just gives it a little bit of an even malady and that way you're loosening the leather evenly on each side. All right, so here's a little update on the glove. Let's see how it's closing just after some malleting and some loosening of the leather. And granted, the amount of time or the amount of mallets we've showed you in the video isn't accurate to what we've actually done. This, we've been malleting this thing for probably around 30 to 40 minutes, just kind of all around, like we talked about, all around the pinky, stretching out these laces. So let's see how it's closing now. As you can see, it's almost there. Like I said, I wanted to overemphasize here because it's ultimately gonna give me that break in right here to the thumb, to middle of fit, middle of the pinky and fourth finger, which is where I want it to be. So that's with one out. Breaking in very nicely. I'm very impressed with the break in on this glove. I think Nike, the overall leather quality on here feels very good, especially when broken in and loosened up. I'm still not gonna wanna play catch with it yet. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put that softball we talked about. I'm just gonna put a softball right here in the pocket wrap it in that Rawlings wrap, and I'm just gonna leave it overnight and just let it sit and create that deep pocket. I'm gonna push it right against those laces, right where the X's are, because that's gonna help give me that pocket. And I'm just gonna close, close the glove how I wanna close it. So I wanna close it thumb to pinky, remember? Because we wanna overemphasize if you're anticipating it closing thumb to fourth finger, overemphasize it thumb to pinky, because ultimately you'll settle that way. So right here, I throw it in, I close the glove, 
And I'm just gonna take that Rawlings wrap we talked about. Whoops, fumbled it a little bit. And now we're just gonna hold that, take it off. Wrap it up over. I know this Rawlings wrap has definitely seen some use over the years, but may, might have to go get some more. Still does its job though. Perfect. And now our glove is perfectly wrapped up all around. It's ready to go. Now you just leave it overnight. All right guys, so here we go. We got the glove still wrapped up in the Rawlings glove wrap from yesterday. It's been sitting overnight, so it's been a while. Uh, it feels really good. The break-in looks great on it. Let's go ahead and we're gonna take that off. Here's the break-in. Looking very nice. We're ready to get some catch in. I gotta say, I really enjoyed breaking this glove in. This glove is phenomenal. I think the overall design of it is great. The leather feels very nice on it. I love the diamond web. I've never actually used a diamond web until now. And I gotta say, I really liked it. It gives it that kind of Japanese look that Nikes are really famous for. I love the quality of the laces on this Nike Elite J. Normally on Elite Js that I've gotten in the past, I noticed that the lace quality is lacking or most of the time I get them and they are relaced. They're not as thick as a Rawlings lace, but they definitely have that same texture and quality to them to the point where use over time isn't gonna really damage them like you normally get on some laces where the uh, lace will wear out over time. So I definitely have to commend Nike for that. I also really, I just love the overall design. I love that golden tan, the gold swoosh with the white outline definitely adds a little bit of pop to it. That diamond web, the split welting, I think they're great gloves that you could potentially use in a game and could potentially treat you very well for a long period of time. So that's all I got really got to say for this one. We'll have to break in some more gloves and I'm going to keep playing catch with this one. I'll continue to give you guys updates on how it turns out as the years and months progress. Uh, but for now, I'm Philip. That's Vincent behind the camera. We are the PVD Glove Bros. We hope you enjoyed this video and until next time, keep playing catch and breaking in those gloves.